are you? You know, I gotta say, I'm still geeking out over Wonderland. I thought that looked so amazing. Isn't that look incredible? My name is William Kemp, the senior editor at CB Guide Magazine. Um, but we must never forget where the mothership, uh, this is where it all began. Uh, once upon a time, the character we grew up with, Snow White. Snow White fans here? You care about their safety, and most importantly, you care about who they're going to fall in love with. So, that being said, where are the Rumbell fans out there? The Captain Swan fans? And you've got to ask about those evil regals. We'll get to the rest of you, I promise. Um, so, without further ado, let's, uh, let's bring out the Storybook gang. Uh, Gentlemen, it's been minutes since you've seen them. Uh, the, uh, the incredible Eddie Kitsis and Adam Horowitz. Sick of us yet? No. Uh, she's, she's the heart of Storybrooke. Uh, she's Snow White, Mary Margaret, Ginny Goodwin. Journey to Neverland. I'm 
the boats. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been a bit rocky, but it's been fun. Of course, those are the actors, not the characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eddie Adam, um, there's a new format this season. Uh, Eleven, tell us about what we're going to expect in the fall of the spring. Yeah. We're um, in the fall running basically 11 episodes in a row uninterrupted and then the same for this spring. So, so we can no longer air one episode every seven months. <laughs> and then when the show is on, we're doing 11 and 11. <laughs> All of you guys have very uh, complex backstories, but some of you I would say more than others. Uh, Josh, I was hoping you could Go back in your memory and try to recount the tale of the twins. What has been their journey? Uh, what, both of them together? What Anyone can remember about where they've been? Well, of course they were separated. They were separated when they were very young. Uh, and, you know, they grew up very differently. They had, uh, you know, different parents, different circumstances, which made them very different people. Uh, and, and, of course, one of them is... He's no longer with us, but yes. we can always uh, go back and, and see him on the screen. And uh, Charming is on his own uh, his own journey. He is, uh, you know, growing and going forward. Don't tell him about the triplet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Michael, you're the other one I wanted to kind of recount your character's history because it's been very, very complicated. Can I have Josh answer? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hi, Michael, tell him about the last 300 years. What? Yeah. There's a lot to, how much time do we have? Uh, yeah, you know, he's had a, he's had a, he's had a, he's had a rough go, uh, but uh, it's getting better. It's getting better. <laughs> well, um, Ginny, it was a very violent year for Snow White. She had a lot of, a lot of loss in her life. We saw the death of her mother. We saw the death of Mrs. Padmore from Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> we love her. <laughs> How is she still keeping uh, the sunny side up? Well, I think that what we learned last season is that she doesn't always. And that, uh, I mean, I guess what goes up must come down. And, and so Snow White has always been sort of uh, at one extreme end of a pendulum swing, and she went very, very far in the other direction. So now it's a matter of uh, finding again who she is. Well, why do you think that the evil queen deserves to be forgiven? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't think she's that bad. <laughs> well, Bobby, we all have our fault. Was it? So we all have our fault. We all have our fault. Bobby and Lana, could you kind of recount, could you remember all the people you've killed, as many as you can? In character. There was a whole town. <laughs> How many are living there again? I don't remember the snail. <laughs> 3,000 snails. Um, <laughs> in the hundreds. My hundreds, possibly. What was your favorite, your favorite kill? My favorite kill yeah. is coming up in yeah. season three. Um, well, let's, let's talk about season three. It was a struggle for you guys to get the rights to Neverland. Eddie, I know that you don't think it was your favorite. Tell yeah. us about the journey to, to bring this to the show. Well, the, the journey was really us waiting for the lawyers to figure it out, so the tale is not as interesting. But this year, what we really are excited about is last year we uh, saw the Shadow, we saw the Darlings, we've met Captain Hook. We have not yet met Peter Pan, and we have not yet seen Neverland, and that is where we are going. Peter Pan is, is evil? Peter Pan is, uh, he's got a complicated motivation. <laughs> Maybe, uh, it's a he little might, different than you've seen him. He might fright, he might be frightening to some people. Well, there's somebody on this panel, little, but not missing, missing, little Henry's been kidnapped, yes? Yes, and that's why he's going to be here. <laughs> Save Henry. Save Henry, people. Save him. Well, Gang, you've been filming now for two weeks. Um, can you give us a sense of, of the look of Neverland? 
uh, the iconic, is there a skull rock? Is there a mermaid grotto? What are some of the places you're going to take us to? We don't know what we can say. They only know the first script. Um, we will be seeing a lot of Neverland, and there will be uh, different areas, and some, of course, um, will be those that you remember from the book, and of course, we'll always have our own spin on it, but it is a fantastical island. If you remember, it is the place where imagination comes from. So it is a place where anything can happen. And uh, where is the movie meeting Tinkerbell soon? to Neverland, but the truth is, is you all have to believe me, see him. Yeah. <laughs> and what kind of uh, sprites is Tinkerbell going to be? Who is this, this creature you're conceiving? Again, it's, it's you know, it's taking the, the icon and putting our spin on it, and, and how, how we uh, introduce her and who she is, is, uh, you know, is, is hopefully going to be surprising because we're going to find she has a surprising connection to, uh, to someone at this table. Well, the obvious choice, I guess, would probably be Colin. I uh, said surprising. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now she, so, it was Colin. He spent all that time. The question is, who else? Who else? else? Okay. Well, Ooh. Colin, you've been kind of a huge addition to the show this past year. Uh, they instantly adore you. Tell us about how you uh, found your Captain your Hook. Is there already a Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow in that? <laughs> Well, no, not really. Actually, when I met uh, Eddie and Adam first, we, we sort of talked about a different spin that maybe, you know, I might try and put on Hook. So he's kind of, uh, he's a little bit Princess Bride, uh, sort of. He's, he's a little bit, there's a, there's a good few of my friends from back home in there, and uh, it's weird because we, we were shooting a scene the other night, and once you put the leather jacket on, I, be, I just become this sort of weird, <laughs> sort of innuendo you baby mean, guys. <laughs> we say that Colin is a gentleman in real life, and Colin is a spicy gentleman in his leather jacket. <laughs> he transforms and says things that Colin would never say. Maybe it's fascinating. One of the, the rivalries I loved watching most last season was between uh, Bobby and Colin. Um, how fun has been that, that uh, crocodile hook rivalry? And then talk about the back and forth that you guys have had all season. Uh, only go call. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was interesting because my, uh, I remember the first day on set, it's actually we were on the Jolly Roger, the actual boat when we were out. And uh, it, was, uh, it was really weird because I was standing across from Robo Carlisle and I remember going, oh, I better not freak out. Uh, but it was, uh, it's, I think it's been, uh, it was interesting, it was uh, sort of a strange relationship. Oh, it's just been great, it's, uh, it was interesting, season one, uh, obviously a lot of the, um, the rivalry was between myself and, uh, and Lana, so it was nice to introduce something else to it, a male figure at that. So uh, it's, been, it's been fantastic, and obviously you call it from Ireland or from Scotland, so we've kind of already got that kind of Celtic. <laughs> But I, 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 no, no one will know what I'm talking about here, but there's a guy called Sid James, he used to be in the Carry On films, and that's what I call him now, so... This is Carry, carry On Captain, man. <laughs> By the way, when we're at dinner with the two of them, we understand one out of every five minutes. <laughs> All of the body get together, and I have no idea what they're saying. Insulting them with a big thump up as well. <laughs> well, a lot of what is, uh, is on the show is CG, so you have to kind of act alongside things that aren't there. Um, anything could be challenging last year that you were acting against a green screen pretending uh, something was in front of you that wasn't? Fire. Yeah. Dragon. Morrison, you had to bite that giant's finger. That was just a... <laughs> oh my god. Yes, I spent a lot of time hanging from a giant brain inner tube. <laughs> and biting it over and over and over again. <laughs> and I went into the makeup trailer and I was like, I think I have chocolate on my lip. I don't remember eating chocolate. We're trying to get up. I had bruised my lip from biting the inner tube over and over and over. 
That was an interesting green energy experience. <laughs> Jennifer, you also had to climb a giant vine. I did. How, how did that uh, come about? Well, I was lucky because I had two arms. Poor Colin <laughs> had a hook and an arm. Okay. <laughs> um, but they did build about the first 40 feet of that in wow. the, uh, on our green screen stage. Wow. And we did really climb that over and over and over again. Um, which was really fun. I mean, I, I love doing stuff like that. I did definitely feel very lucky to have two arms. So yeah, it made, a big, it made a big difference. Because <laughs> the, the hook has a, little, it has a little thing that I hold on to. So you can't actually put any pressure. You can't pull on it. So literally, I have to go one-handed and then pretend that I was using the other one. <laughs> so one-handed up. So uh, it, was, it was difficult, you know. Yeah. And Jennifer, talk about working with, uh, with Jorge Garcia as, as the giant. Oh, I love Jorge. I mean, oh my God. Jorge Garcia is a lovely human being. Uh, I'm so happy that it was him playing that role. Um, you know, Emma always connects to people who feel like they're on the outside and they don't feel included. And so that was a really fun character for Emma to develop a friendship with. And, and um, Jorge's just lovely to have around no matter what. He's, he's someone that, you know, he's such a wonderful part of the cast. And when he returned sort of in human size in the, in the bean field, yeah. it was just a really nice moment for Emma to sort of reconnect with what felt like an old friend, you know, even though they, they had gone through so much. So he's great. Love him. <laughs> you think we'll see more of him, Eddie Adam, this season? Um, you know, I, I, we love Jorge. You know, we wrote for him for six years on Lost. And, um, <laughs> Make a giant into a dwarf. So uh, but we would love to see him this series. On he's uh, we'll see if his schedule allows. But you know, right now we're in Neverland, and the people. Um, you know, we're going to see the people. Uh, you know, on this stage right now for a while. Well, the show is obviously very expensive to film. I know you rely on, on sponsors. We we do, unfortunately, as always. Um, these these panel bottles, these panels, comes they, at a cost. Yeah. So if you don't mind, there we are. You should be used to watching the show. We need. Another, uh, just a little moment for a commercial break. I'm putting part of this. Dim the lights. Big thanks to Matt and Jay Espenson, who wrote that, and um, of course Paul Scheer and about Nicole Brown, who uh, we cannot wait for community this year. Anyway, it was good to see you in that clip. Um, I want to ask about playing Lacey this past season. The Dark Bell. Yeah, I kind of miss her. She was a lot of fun. It was um, almost for a few episodes they were playing three characters. You know, Flashback Bell, Story Bell, and then Story Lacey. But yeah, she was, she was a uh, kind of feisty. <laughs> she came straight out of a White Snake video. <laughs> Saucy. Well, Probably one of her favorite albums. <laughs> give, give us a sense of what we can hope for with Belle in Storybrooke since she's uh, holding down the forts. What? Belle for Mayor. Yeah, I guess it's a hashtag <laughs> Belle for Mayor, so I don't know. Um, we'll see. Calm, <laughs> calm troll. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just starting out, so I guess we'll have to see. Mm. But um, I'm so excited to start. Belle for Mayor? Well, there's a lot in store for Belle, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, what's happening back in Storybrooke and what's happening in Neverland, I think uh, we're going to find, hopefully, connected in a, in a surprising way. But, you know, for us, of course, we remember uh, Mr. Gold um, is on a suicide mission in Neverland because the prophecy said that to uh, save Henry, he is going to have to die. And that is why he wanted to go face his death alone. So the question I'm wondering is, will these two ever be reunited? Mm. Will they find their happy ending? Well, there was a... There was well, if they don't, I'm sure I won't hear anything from the Twitter universe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never seen anything called Rum Bell or had it um, flood my inbox. <laughs> it's, it's so, I would, yeah, I would, I, you know, who knows? There was, a, there was a Twitter question I got this week from um, somebody named Jewel Sci-Fi, and she wanted to ask uh, Emily, how do you think Belle would react 
uh, if she found out that she had a little gold bun in the oven. Well, the Annie's <laughs> open never that. Because what would it be if it if it was in fact a bellish child or a, a dark child or a half and half and you wouldn't know? It could be it sort of like a Bible weekend. Yeah, yeah. 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 That'd be interesting. That's not bad. I've always wanted a brother or sister. <laughs> like if it twins, you get one good and one evil, sort of like. Well, Lana, we had a lot of fun last year when you recited a line, uh, a classic line from, from your show, and some of the Twitter fans actually came up with some of their favorite lines for, for just a few of you that uh, we were hoping you might recite. Um, so, I want to ask first, Robert, if you would uh, give us a deary. Let's hear a deary. All right, deary. <laughs> Pass out these cards to four of y'all, be right back. Nominated. 
I'm in love with him. Anyway, um, in December of this past year, he actually came to the five of you and asked you to autograph pictures addressed to someone named Tammy. Uh, that was my mother, and it was her Christmas present, and it's the only thing I've ever been able to give to her that represented something that we have both bonded over. Aww. And I wanted to personally, I came here from Colorado, and I wanted to personally thank you for taking the time to do that. Of course. Because it meant so How long did it take you to do your makeup? I just wanted to ask that. It was about 45 minutes. Wow. I have it was worth it. on my face. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, 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 I can't give you anything today, but Eduardo, I'm mailing you guys thank you cards through him. Oh, thank so. you. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks. And I have a question for Robert, Emily, and Michael. Um, uh, we saw a lot of complexity come out of Rumpelstiltskin and Mr. Gold this season. And my question is, is there anything that Rumpelstiltskin could do that Belle and Bale I wouldn't forgive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of things that the Stilson could do that people wouldn't forgive. Um, <laughs> I'm very forgiving now. You are? He still needs a portal. Even the dark one needs uh, transportation. <laughs> and apparently a compass, because I carried that compass for a long time last year. <laughs> and a passport. <laughs> and a Delta Miles card when they went to New York. <laughs> Next. Hi, my name is Ariel. Oh! Ooh. Yeah, he's fancy. <laughs> as to um, what characteristics you think you share in your characters. And I love all of you. You have a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. Josh, Jenny, you want to take that? Uh, optimism? I can be a bit selfish, and I can see that in the snow. Yeah. Impulsivity. Is that a word, writers? It is now. It is now. It's a good word. I think Charming can be impulsive sometimes. He can, he can let things kind of run, run wild in him. Kind of, uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of that. Sure. You use the word you just invented, impulsivity. Impulsivity. Yes, yeah, right. impulsivity. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I share, impulsivity. <laughs> Yo, there was a moment last season, one moment when we were separated. Is it ever, is it possible that this, the charming could ever break up, even momentarily? Ah, I would, I mean, that is the loss of all hope. We're so sad. We all I don't know what I'm thinking about that. <laughs> I won't stop drawing. <laughs> Next. Hi, my name is Olivia. Your eyes are all great. And I was wondering, out of both the worlds, The Enchanted Forest and Storybrooke, which one do you think your character belongs in? Oh, great question. Storybrooke. Uh, Bobby. Bobby is the Burbank. I think fairy tale. I think I don't know, but I think most of them are trying to get back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the fairy tale, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 And and Michael, you uh, you ended up in a precarious situation with uh, Mulan and Aurora and Prince uh, Philip. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How did you feel about that when you when you read that? Did you think you were going to die first of all? Did you think you were a goner? 
No. no. <laughs> To be fair, we call them and say, you're going to read tomorrow a script that says you're dying, you're not dying. That's, that's kind of what gave it away. I ruined it. You say what I ruined, yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, it, it, was, I, it was a very fortuitous situation I found myself in. I mean, you know, I could have, been, I could have landed anywhere. Um, there's a reason I landed where I did land, which we'll sort of discover later. But, um, but to just sort of be found by people who were clearly willing to help. Pretty great strokes of luck. Well, there are shippers out there who are already matching up with Mulan. Uh, Watch is that, it. A, is that a possibility? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, my baby's daddy you're talking about. What's the Mulan one? Balon? Ninja Fire? <laughs> I like it. Like the warrior Fire. The oh, Warrior Fire. Balon, I think. Is that a couple we're considering? Sounds dangerous. Balon. Well, you know, Baylon. I think, uh, is it a couple we're considering? I think, you know, the last thing I saw Neil do was look up at the woman he's loved for 10 years and say, I love you too. And right now, I mean, I can't imagine he doesn't want to get back to her and his son. Unfortunately for him, She's with, um, Captain Hook. Yeah. Uh, that's true, but, uh, you know, Neil... Debate that. Neil's, Neil's gonna attempt at least yeah. to move heaven and hell, and if there's a captain in the way as well, so be it. We, we can fight it out right now, everyone. <laughs> Go oh, your hook. Oh, Jennifer, how do you feel about a possible romance between... between Emma and Hook? I don't know, we just shared a drink recently, so... <laughs> yeah. You what? <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, I think I said it before, maybe it's, you know, it could be time for Hook to sort of get over his thing with uh, Mila and stuff. And here it's only been a couple hundred years. It's only been that long, so. Not with my daughter. <laughs> uh, Hook could be with everybody's daughter, you never know. <laughs> We have time for one more. All right. Hello? Hi. Hi. My name is Louie, and I want to know if we will find out what mermaid was in here so interested about that she went to, to Rumble Still's camp. No. That's, That's a great interesting question. I know, uh, you know, anything can happen in Neverland. Watch season three. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, and uh, thank you everyone, we appreciate your support. Yeah.